central premise of The Devil You Know is that we all have the capacity for evil. And it's probably better if we know something about the devils that we have than rather affecting some kind of ignorance about them. And the idea is that by exploring the case stories of people who've done terrible things, we can explore our shared humanity with them, the extent to which we're more alike than we are different. And that is perhaps a slightly different take on understanding the lives of people who've committed violent crime. A forensic psychiatrist is a psychiatrist who specialises in the assessment and treatment of offenders with mental illness, illnesses and a variety of mental health problems. And forensic psychiatrists also give evidence in different kinds of court. The word forensic comes from the Latin word forum. And it, so it's really referring to a place where disputes are, are held. And so forensic psychiatrists specialise in working with those people who've got into contact with the criminal law because often at times when they've been mentally unwell. And so my daily job involves assessing people who've committed crimes of violence while they've been mentally ill, or people who've spent time, who've be, who spent time in prisons and become mentally ill. So I frequently go into prisons as a forensic psychiatrist because I'm there to see people who've become mentally ill while they're serving a prison sentence. In The Devil You Know, Eileen and I have created case histories which are based on typical kinds of cases that I've seen in my working life as a forensic psychiatrist, whether that's cases that I've seen in prison, cases that I've assessed with different kinds of court, or cases that I've worked with as a therapist or as a psychiatrist um, in secure psychiatric settings. And the cases are composites, so they're based on lots of different kinds of cases, but they're all pretty typical. They involve people who find themselves in conflict with the criminal law, often who've done terrible things, but sometimes not always, not yet have done terrible things, but where they're concerned about the risk of harm that they might pose. But all those cases are pretty much the bread and butter of a forensic psychiatrist. People often ask me if I feel scared or daunted by working in forensic settings with people who've done really horrible or violent things. And my answer is pretty much no. Nearly always I would say I, that I feel quite safe when I'm working in a prison or a secure psychiatric setting because there's a sense in which that we know where the danger is. We know that the people there have been dangerous to others and could potentially be so. But in general, it's rare for people uh, who I work with to be in any way threatening or dangerous to me. In general, they know that I want to help them and I'm there to help them if I can. The real danger is usually in the community where you don't really know what's going to come in the door next. Eileen and I talk a lot about empathy in this book and um, we've used a phrase called radical empathy to structure the way that we've thought about these case histories. And empathy is important because it's really about a human capacity to stand in somebody else's shoes and see it from their perspective. That doesn't always mean feeling exactly the way that they feel or agreeing with the way that they feel. But radical empathy involves a kind of compassionate ability to see things from the perspective of an offender while still maintaining a kind of com detachment, not being too emotionally involved. So it's vitally important if we're going to understand the meaning of violence for an offender that we take a step closer to understanding how he or she sees the world and understands the meaning of their actions for them. So what does a successful outcome look like for a forensic psychiatrist? Well, there are different answers to that. I guess the main one is that we want to try and improve people's mental health. We are basically a mental health service for people who find themselves in a very particular time of their life. So we're hoping always to improve people's mental health and hope that they feel better. 
But that feeling better is not enough. We also want them to feel better about their place in the world and understanding how they can become safer in the world and live more safely with other people. So there's an important aspect to the work that we do that it's not enough just for people to feel better, they also have to engage in more pro-social kinds of behaviour. So we really feel good when a man, or indeed a woman, is able to take responsibility for what they've done, but also commit themselves to living in a, and working and behaving in a different way in the future. It was really important to work with a writer and dramatist like Eileen because she was able to help me evolve the stories of the people over time and also to help me understand how I've changed my own thinking and feeling about working with patients over time. It was also essential that Eileen help me to create layers and barriers uh, between people's real identities and create those composite case stories that help to protect therapeutic privilege and confidentiality. So it was crucial to have someone like her who could translate my professional kind of language into narratives that were much more readable and much more user-friendly. So you know, it's been a really important process for us to use her skills to develop narratives, the narratives over time, and help articulate the way I see my work. I think both Eileen and I hope very much that when people have finished reading The Devil You Know, they will come away with a different perspective on people who've done terrible things. That they will take a moment to see the human side of those people and think perhaps about how the trauma and pain that some of these people have gone through has contributed to their violence risk. I hope that they will see that people that we ostracise like this are in fact not monsters, that, but people that we might want to get closer to in order to understand them better, and by understanding them better, think of ways to prevent future violence.